Revenge Films. My name is Kelly. I'm once divorced and got remarried to my husband Michael a few years ago. My husband was also once divorced, and we were both getting married for the second time. When we first got married, we moved in with Michael and his family to his family home. Very soon after that, I found out the reason why he got a divorce from his first wife was because of his older sister who is still single and living at home. Michael's older sister Karen claimed that she wanted to look after her mother until the very end. And so, instead of moving out and having an independent life of her own, she was just leeching at home. Because my mother-in-law was very kind and had a quiet, easygoing personality, it was a given at my husband's house that the sister Karen had the reins. She wasn't even working and stayed home all day doing whatever she wanted. But on top of that, Karen was always complaining and harassing me. And no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't bring myself to like her. Dinner is ready, everyone! Oh my, is today beef stew? Wow, this looks delicious! Thank you, Kelly! Are you kidding me? Beef stew isn't healthy at all! What a ridiculous dinner! What are you trying to do to us by making this? Oh, really? I'm sorry. Do you like beef stew? What is this? It's tasteless. It's so disgusting that I can't eat this. Whatever. I'm just going to make myself a microwave dinner because this is terrible. I'm so sorry, Karen. This is all my fault for spoiling her. As for my husband, Michael, he would just stand there in silence and watch the whole interaction unfold without stepping in. Even though time has passed since Michael and I moved in with him, Karen didn't show any signs of working or leaving at all. And so I told Michael that I had strongly wanted to move out and live separately on our own. But then Michael reluctantly told his mother that. And he told her that we would rent an apartment really close to their house so that she would agree to it. Even though I wasn't happy that we'd be living so close to his family home, I just wanted to move out of there as soon as possible, so I decided to go along with my husband and his agreement and we moved out. When I was finally living with my evil sister-in-law, I was still relieved, but it doesn't mean that everything was going to go well after that. Michael had actually lost his father early on, and he said I was too worried about his mother even though his sister was supposedly taking care of her. That's when he said that he wanted to start sending money back to his mother, so I picked up a job with remote working from home and started earning money so that we could send it to his mother. Michael was saying that he wanted to send at least 800 a month to his mom, and even though I said that I understand and was doing everything I could to help him, after we started living on our own, my husband started going back home to his mother's house almost every single day to eat dinner before coming home late at night. I was starting to become frustrated that I wasn't even coming home past 9 8 p.m. every day. But at the same time, I knew how much he loved his mother and cared about her since before we got married. So I decided to become more tolerant and let him spend time with his family. However, not long after that, an incident occurred that would suppress my limits of patience. One day, as usual, as I was waiting for my husband to come home late in the evening, I got a phone call from Karen. Yes, hello? Hello? Oh, Kelly, I have a little favor to ask you, actually. Oh, Karen, what is it? Can you please stop staying at home and waiting for Michael to come back? Because of you, Michael can't see you out of our place like you want to, and it's a pain. You're making your mother sad. Even though I was already frustrated that my husband was coming home late every single day, I couldn't believe what Karen was complaining to me about, and finally my anger erupted. When my husband finally came home that day, I decided to confront him about my frustrations. Kelly, I'm home! Michael, do you have a minute? What's the matter? I've been wanting to ask you for some time now, but I don't know anymore. And you have to tell me, which is your real household, here or your mother's house? I couldn't hold back the tears I asked him, and was Michael's response. Well, my sister said my mom's been feeling lonely, and she's been begging me to come over, so... And that was his response. With those words, he was avoiding all responsibility that I was shocked, and I couldn't even find the words to respond. On that day, I decided to go into the guest room and sleep by myself. The next day, I decided to call my mother and discuss the situation with her in great advice. My mother's response was exactly what I was feeling, that I wasn't something for a man who has his own family now to say, and she was furious at Michael. While listening to my mother's advice, I decided to re-educate my husband on what it's meant to be a married couple. And so I decided to tell him that he was no longer allowed to go to and from his family home for a bit. But then, even though Karen shouldn't have known about the conversation, I started receiving harassment phone calls from her every single day. And then when my husband wasn't around, I was stuck having to speak to her on the phone for hours on end and the stress was only building up. I was remote working from home and yet she would call me at the most pointless rant for hours when I would have a deadline coming up and I was afraid at this rate it was going to cause damages to my lifestyle. I realized that I needed to just tell her straight up that the problem that she was causing was her. 
I knew that we were going to be getting into fights with this, but I decided to say everything to her face next time that we spoke. Hey, Kelly, listen to this. Karen, please don't call me anymore. What? But this is about my mom. I need to talk to you about this. You're the one that said that you're going to look after her. What's the issue? You decided everything yourself and do it all yourself. I don't want to hear your voice anymore, Karen. Please don't call anymore. I spoke directly to her. Just as expected, my sister-in-law threw a tantrum at me. How dare you speak to me like that? Who do you think I am? Who do you think you are speaking like that? Are you kidding me? Karen was furious on the other side of the phone, but I simply ignored her and hung up. From there, I refused to pick up any of her phone calls anymore, and it became estranged from Michael's family. I did tell Michael about this, but as usual, he gave me extremely vague responses without bearing any responsibility. And so, I decided to take the opportunity and have him be clear with me. Just so you know, I've cut off all ties with your sister. Is that so? That might be the best anyway. That this is my situation, I want to be clear as well. So which side are you going to take as a true household, me or your mom's house? What do you mean? I completely understand that you're worried about your mom, but you're just going to spend the rest of your life just following orders from your sister? Alright, alright, I understand. I'll do my best not to get involved with my sister anymore. After that, Michael did in fact stay true to his word, and he kept his distance from his sister. He was only directly in contact with his mother, and outside of that, he didn't spend much time back home with his family house. I didn't dislike my mother-in-law, in fact, she had been really good to me for all these years. And so, sometimes without telling Michael's sister, the three of us would meet up for meals outside. I was able to maintain a stress-free relationship with her, which is what I was really grateful for. But that was only for a short time. After that, it was discovered that my mother-in-law had an illness, and she was repeatedly going in and out of the hospital. Every single time that my mother-in-law was hospitalized, I was going to the hospital to support her and care for her. However, as for my sister-in-law, she was just lazing around at home, and she rarely ever showed her face at the hospital, even though her mother was there. On top of that, my mother-in-law started saying that she didn't have enough money for the hospital bills, and so I asked her what happened to the money that they were sending every month. That's when I discovered, to my disgust, that $800 we're sending to our mother-in-law was actually going straight to the hands of Karen. My husband and I were already fully distrust towards his sister, but that was the final straw. However, Michael's mother was quite ill and we didn't have the time to be worrying about his sister. We didn't want to get into a fight with his mother at the state, so we also held it in. And then, eight years later, after a long battle with her illness, my mother-in-law passed away. My husband and I were overwhelmed with sadness, and even though we were devastated, after some time passed at the funeral, we were finally able to regain our normal lives. As for my sister-in-law, now that she was left alone, we thought that she would finally become independent, but instead she started living off welfare. Knowing that she's been using up all the money that we sent for her mother's sake, even though Michael had been mellow against his sister all this time, even he was furious, and the two of us decided to barge into the family home and confront her. When we arrived for the first time in years, compared to when his mother was still alive, the house was a complete disaster. The front door wasn't even locked. We walked into the house. Even though it hasn't been long since Michael's mother passed away, a two-hour disbelief. When we walked in there, there was an unknown man playing a game inside. Amelia started yelling at him, confronting him about what was going on, and the man started to panic and tried to run away. Why are you running away?! Just as Michael was cornering the mysterious man, the man's cell phone rang. In the beginning, he was just ignoring it, but it continued to ring over and over again. We told him to take care of it. However, when we looked at the phone screen, we noticed that there was a woman's name on it. When my husband confronted him about this even more, the man then revealed the most shocking truth. It's a call from my wife, so please let me answer! Your wife? Does that mean that you're having an affair?! We couldn't believe it. Even though her mother had just passed away, Karen was taking full advantage of the empty house and bringing a married man who had a child and was having an extra marital affair with him. We couldn't forgive either of them. My husband immediately snatched the phone out of the man's hand. Hello? Yes? You need to know that your husband is cheating on you. I'm going to tell you the address, so please come straight away and see for yourself. Stop that! Michael, what are you doing? Stop! Stop right now! When Michael exposed the affair to the man's wife, the man and Karen were panicking. Not long after that, the man's wife showed up at the house, and Karen and the man got down on their knees to try to apologize. I have to admit that the scene did make Michael and I feel a bit better. And then, Michael then turned to Karen and told him that he was going to collect the eight years worth of money that we have been sending every month for her, and also told her that we'd be cutting off all ties with her. Although my sister-in-law didn't receive much inheritance from her mother, she had to use what little of it was left in order to pay Michael back for everything we had been sending for all these years.
And then, once it was all paid off, my husband and I didn't speak to her sister ever again. After that, we found out that the married man's wife sued both of them for a settlement fee, and Karen had to take out a loan in order to pay that. And then she was no longer able to live off the welfare, and so she was desperately trying to search for a job. However, because she had never worked a job before, no company wanted to hire her, and so the family house was confiscated, and my sister-in-law disappeared. I can only imagine that her life after that was going to be a battle with loneliness and poverty. As for my husband's brainwash cured, he was no longer wishy-washy about where he stood in our relationship, and we got along even better than before. When I realized that I didn't have an enemy in my life anymore, I was happy from the bottom of my heart, and looking forward to the rest of my life together with Michael. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more!